This is my advice. Don't go to Atlanta if you ain't shit where you from already. Mm. You can't go to Atlanta and can't nobody call home about you and hear nothing good. You just want to go to Atlanta because you suck in Houston. You gonna go out there, you gonna suck in Atlanta too, my nigga. You need to motherfucking put that work in. I hate when niggas try to avoid that. You can't mm -hmm. avoid it. If you do avoid it, when you pop off, it's not gonna last. It's gonna last for a summer or a year, and you're gonna go back to being lame. No one's gonna let you in the clubs. The bitch is not gonna fuck with you. All that shit. You gotta make Mr. Rogers like you. You gotta make High C like you. JQ gotta like you. Kiati gotta like you. GT Main gotta like you. You gotta make these niggas like you. MC Kane gotta scream your name when you walk in the club. You gotta make these people like you because these are the people who make you. You know what I'm saying? You gotta get on where you're from. And when you get on where you're from, it's a respect level that will never go away. You'll make money for the rest of your life. You know what I'm saying? You People can call home about you. I just met E. Feezy. He's like the biggest DJ in Miami. As soon as we met, he got to doing his research. Because he knew about Throw That Ass. He knew about all my hits. He just wanted to make sure he wanted to fuck with me as a person. And that's what DJs and people do. So they call home. They call rap a lot, or they call, they call. B King, man, this, this nigga, he, he really got hits like that in the age, yep. And then they say this magical phrase, that's what's up. But did you fuck with him? I fuck with that nigga, he 100. And if you don't get that, I fuck with that nigga, he 100. No matter where you move to, you can move to goddamn LA, you can move. But also saying that, I also say this. Go where the love is. Maybe you won't break in your city, but you're gonna have to break somewhere. You know what I'm saying? So if people are embracing you in Vegas or embracing you in another city, then attack that market. And that'd be <laughs> really where you're from. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Where they showing you that love that you gotta have somewhere where the foundation is. Mm -hmm. The foundation has to start somewhere, you know what I'm saying? And maybe you want to lucky, or maybe your foundation is start in Atlanta. But I, I highly doubt it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Atlanta, play Atlanta. And when you get on out there, it's a lovely feeling. You know what I'm saying? But you got to think about it. Everyone is doing that. I'm going to go to Atlanta and get on. And when they get there, and they even spent five racks on fucking trying to make it rain in clubs and getting in the clubs and all type of shit, hotels, all this shit. You look up like, dang, man, that's the lame shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like, you just gotta put that, you can't avoid that foundation. Right. Speaking on, you know, approaching DJs, a lot of artists that I talk to, they're on some like, ah, I ain't kissing ass. I'm not doing this. I'm not breaking bread. Um, they, gotta, they gotta come fuck with me. I'm not going to go reach out to them. I mean, we all know artists like that. Um, how is the, what is the appropriate way to approach a DJ? Some DJs are whole ass niggas, man. Shit. Shit. It's just like you got real niggas and whole ass niggas in every hood. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Some DJs are very um, sensitive and petty and they want you to kiss their ass. And my advice is, again, go where the love is. You know what I'm saying? If you're a new artist, you can't expect to go up to Rogers at one o'clock, like, hey man, I'm I'm MC Northside and I want you to play my song right now. He gonna look at you crazy because he don't know if your song is mixed, he don't know what it sounds like, he don't know nothing. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like you gotta go early. You know what I'm saying? And when you go early, like at eleven o'clock, you realize that Rogers is not there. It's this new guy. It's a guy opening. He just as important as Rogers though, because he's playing music all the way up to 11:59. Mm -hmm. When Rogers get there at 12, he takes it on for the rest of the night, but he can play a song at 11:59. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, get cool with the little niggas, cause you don't know who they're gonna be next year. Like DJ Allo, perfect example. I remember 2010. This nigga DJing upstairs at Club Heat by himself. Two bitches walking around that bitch. It was lit downstairs, but he upstairs. 
still went up there to chill with him. Because, mm-hmm. and then next year, nigga saw LAD and song Pimp with Fat Pimp and the Young Nation and all that, you know what I'm saying? So you never know who that little nigga gonna be next year. So talk to everybody, go to clubs early at 11 o'clock and build them relationships, you know what I'm saying? And them big DJs, they gonna start fucking with you after that. You know what I'm saying? One reason why I was able to last all these years is my relationships with DJs. I can call them all. When I did Bust It Back, coming out, when I, after Keisha, I was like, I need some, need some hard shit. So I made Bust It Back and I hit up every DJ that I knew and told them I was gonna come see him. I did Houston for two weeks, went to every club, sat there, let niggas know I ain't Hollywood, I still pull up on you. Did it in Dallas. Went to every club. You can ask Q, you can ask everybody out there. Went to all the clubs in Dallas. Put up on, went to Onyx everywhere. Black Diamond, shot to Papa Ron. Mm-hmm. Went to Ecstasy, shot to uh, Bo Kane. Went there. Chopped it up with everybody. You know what I'm saying? Once I get Texas, I let that marinate for like a month. Then I spread everywhere else. I'm going to Shreveport and the rest of Louisiana and the Jackson and the Oklahoma and the Memphis and all that. I just gave y'all my plan down. But anyway, yeah, that's what you gotta do. You gotta talk to these DJs and build relationships, all that. Man, you gotta talk to me and all that, man. You gotta talk to you. Even if you got a hit, because next shit you probably ain't gonna be shit. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, you gotta, these niggas gotta become your friend. They gotta feel like they're breaking their friend's song. Not a nigga who rap. They gotta feel like they're breaking their partner's song. And that's how DJs feel with me. They want drops for me, they can get them, all that. But then you so, may have people who say, man, they fuck with Atlanta shit, but they won't fuck with Houston shit, or they won't fuck with Dallas shit, or they won't fuck with Texas shit. Oh, y'all can break they shit, but y'all can't break our shit. And y'all don't all, even know them niggas. It's all an excuse. And that's what, with me, I've never been a complainer. It's all an excuse. Your music is not up to par. Hmm. And niggas don't want to hear that because when they in the hood making their shit in the closet and all their partners are listening to that shit, the big homie that sell all the dope, who's going to put all the money into your wax song, he likes it. You know, so they don't want to hear that they song is not that good. They don't want to hear that they rapping just like Dolph. Are you rapping just like Migos or, Migos or Soft mm-hmm. Twin? They don't want to hear that. All right. You know what I'm saying? So, niggas don't be special. Their music don't be special. And that was my whole thing. When you make it a hit, you gotta kinda try to find something that ain't been said or done before. And if it has been said, you gotta find your way to do it. You know what I'm saying? And niggas just don't, their music don't be special. Have you ever, was there ever a time where you did invest in get the DJs, break the DJs off? Or was it always this organic? Always organic. So the money I mean, bottles ain't the way for the DJs. And I ain't trying to throw salt on any coalitions, you know what I'm saying? Get your paper. But, it's a but. If you pay a DJ to play your song, it is no respect for you. And you will have to pay again, and again, and again, and again. And when you stop paying, they stop playing. You know what I'm saying? My whole thing was always this. If you pay a DJ coalition in the city where you from, you just lazy, my nigga. You should never pay no DJ coalition where you live. Because you can go to all these clubs and meet these niggas and get their phone numbers and stay on them yourself. You gonna be, you from Houston, but you pay a DJ coalition to break your song so you can just sit back and maybe go in the clubs four or five months later and be like, oh man, I'm popping. Your song never really gets broke anyway. Let's just throw it out there. You know what I'm saying? You can't avoid putting that work in. When you put that work in, all them DJs are gonna respect you. They're gonna respect you. Me and DJs have fell out about that. But now we're like brothers now. And it's a respect level, like BK going on seven years. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like if you, you can't avoid putting that work in.